In my recent iRacing years, I simply lost the count how many times I wished that I can compare myself and my friends in one of our favorite series, or just simply to have an overview about how far I am from the guys who are lapping the fastest lap times in my favorite series. Oftentimes I was practicing for a race, but I had no clue what lap times should I do. I had no clue whether my lap time is good enough for a race. I didn't know whether it's an average lap time, if it's a bad lap time, or if my lap time is actually a fast lap time. Luckily, we have solution for all of these problems. Just make sure you watch this video. You don't want to miss it. We believe that this is the solution. It's called the series module and it's a new module in Race Lab. What it does is it shows you information about all the different series that you were missing out from the average iRacing experience. And as you can see, we have a list of series on the very first page and we have all the series that iRacing has. You can do many things with this list. Let's see first all the filters we have that you can find on the top part of this page. On the very first one, series search, you can basically type in your series name and then you can find it easily. My favorite series is the iRacing Grand Prix series which is this uh, formula car and as you can see you can easily find it and if you want to mark it as a favorite series then you can do it on the right side of this card mine was already marked you can filter this list also by category you can choose all category you can choose road category you can choose oval category and you will see only oval races here oval series is here and so on and then you can search series is by car which i find it particularly useful if you like a car but you don't know which series you can actually drive the car which is for me a very common missing part from iRacing for example i like the car the ferrari gt3 car which is the 488 gt3 and if i click on it I immediately see that there are four different series where I can actually use the car. All I need to do is pick one and race with it. How easy is that? What you can also do is you can mark different series as a favorite series. What I did is I marked all the series that I usually play and then I just turn on this favorite filter that will only show my favorite series that I usually uh, play. So as you can see I only have four of them so it's very easy every time when I come back to the series page all the filters are going to be remembered what you set for the last time. Let's see what kind of information we can get out of these series cards just by looking at them. Picking an example the Ferrari GT3 Challenge which is a fixed series in iRacing we can see what type of car is in this series. If there are multiple cars, we will see multiple cars in this part of the card. A good example is a series that, for example, has multiple classes over here. It's called IMSA. As we can see, we have three different car classes indicated with three different colors. And each of these classes, we see all the cars that we can choose. So going back to the Ferrari GT3 challenge, we have some metrics here. So let's go through one by one. First is average strength of field. Obviously the average strength of field for uh, the races that's happening in this series. We have the top strength of field, which is the highest SOF, highest strength of field that happened in this series. Average incidents telling you how many incidents in average one race has in this series and then starts which tells you how many drivers started a race in the series giving an example if there is a race with 25 drivers in it that's 25 starts so this number tells you how many starts overall this series had all of these metrics are seasonal metrics it's always scoped to the current season DPR is 
drivers per race, a very good indication about how many drivers you're going to have if you join to a race in this series. There are less popular series where you can see this driver per race dropped to a pretty low number, six, seven, eight. And then you will know that, um, you know, if I join to this race, I might not get a lot of drivers around me. Let's pick one of the series and let's see what more we can get out of this. I'm going to pick IMSA Sports Car Championship Series because this is the example where I can show you all the different features we have for one single series. So let's go into this IMSA Sports Car Championship and we are arriving on a page with a lot more details about the series. Let's have a basic overview on the page. On the top side you have all the basic information that we've seen before on the card and then we have the contents on the bottom and you see a lot of different things so let's just break it apart. We have different tabs which is basically different pages you can see. You will see different metrics on these pages. On the right side you have the week chooser. We are on week 12 so the last week of the season. I can change this, I can go back to week 11, week 10, or I can just go back to the current one, which is week 12. And then on the right side, if you have a series that has multiple car classes, you will be able to choose them. It's sort of a filter. It gives you a different view on this page, which we will see in a second. On the left side, you can see the schedule, which tells you all the different tracks for every race week that you're going to have. So at the moment, because this is the highlighted one, we are at week 12, which is on a track Sebring International Raceway. And you also see the configuration of it, which is international. On the right side, what you can see is a lap time comparison between the cars. If you have multiple cars, you will see multiple car lap times there. If you have multiple car classes, you will see all the different car classes with all the different cars and the differences between the cars. Now, let's talk about the right side, because this is what's most important. By default, we see the best race lap time for each of the cars that are available in the series. The fastest lap time with this Ferrari on this track was 155.018. And then you can see all the other cars and then you can compare them. As you can see, it's really important to know what car is the fastest car for a given week. If you're talking about a series that has multiple cars, naturally different cars can adapt to different tracks in a better way. It could easily be that the Chevrolet, which is the slowest car for this week, it could easily be that in the next week, the Chevrolet will be the car that is the fastest for the track. As you can see here, we can see an easy comparison. What I can see on this list is that on Sebring, you want to pick the Ferrari because the Ferrari is the best car for this track because this has the fastest lap time. Very, very close to it, there is a Porsche. You can easily pick Porsche as well because they practically have the same uh, fastest lap time. But then the BMW and the Chevrolet is a little bit behind, so you might want to avoid picking them. Otherwise, you will have some disadvantage because these cars are naturally just slower on this track. If I want to see a different track, let's say the very first week of this series, which was on Watkins Glen track, what we're going to see is the Chevrolet was actually the fastest car, which is surprising, right? Because on Sebring, Chevrolet is basically the slowest. So that's the problem that people playing in this series usually don't know. You can also argue this because you can say, oh, but I know setup makers who make setups for each car and then I can see the best lap time there that they made. The problem with this is it's a biased lap time. Every setup maker is good in one thing and not as good in the other thing. Maybe there is a setup maker that is really good and understanding how to make setups for Ferrari, but on the meantime, 
the Porsche setup is really poor because they are not very good in it. You're gonna always see a biased result if you look at the lap times in specific setup makers. What we have is basically the truth, basically the raw results of every race that happened in the series of that given week. There is no bias in it, you see the raw and the pure results in there. And now comes the fun part because without any struggle you're going to see your own lap time with just one click. I know that I was racing with this series just a couple of hours ago and I was racing with an LMP car. So all I need to do is I need to click on this LMP filter here and we're going to see my lap time on this graph. It looks probably a bit complicated at the first time but then you're gonna get used to it very easily. What we can see here is first of all two indication. The one over here is the fastest lap time someone did in this series of this week. So this is the ultimate lap time that you can strive for. And then we have a metric that represents the 107% of this fastest lap time. So between that range, we can call someone has a fast pace if he is between 100 and 101% of this lap time, average pace if it's between 101 and 104%, off pace, bad pace and no pace if it has some other percentage otherwise. As we can see, I did 1 minute 48 second 8 tenths, which was a race lap time. Here you can see that this is the best race lap time. My best race lap time was this. And this is 3.1 second off from the best race lap time. It's pretty cool to see because I don't need to do anything. I can already see my lap time. And then what I can also do is I can cycle through different metrics here to get some indication. So this is what we can see here. What's on the bottom side is basically me and my friends in the list. All the things that is on the bottom side here in this table, we can see it representing in this graph based on you know what your lap time was. Obviously these persons that I added, they didn't race in this series, so we don't have lap time to compare to. But if I go to a different series, which is for me the Iris in Grand Prix series, it only has one car, so I don't need to select you know any cars here. But I was driving this series in week four and all of my friends has some lap times for this week. And I can see that I'm basically second. Imran was first between us. You know, I don't mind that the, the best lap time is a second off from our pace. But what we can do here is we can compare friends to each other. So we can see that we are really close actually to each other, just a couple of tens. And you might wonder how do you add friends? Now, this is not your irising friends. This is just the friends you compose here. And the easiest way to add friend is just to search a friend here in this search driver field, which I did. So for example, if I remove a loop from my friends list, just to illustrate how to add him back, Luke Dowling, and then I will have a list of, you know, drivers that this uh, search matches and I just click on him and then there it is I already added him and he will show every time if I go and try to see my lap times on this page so if I go to any other series I click on one series and I will see him over here if he drove in that series I will see his lap time and the comparison between me and him and it's just a fun way to to compare and what you also have here is we have these B letters here, which I like to set it to B0, but it's really up to your liking. What you can do here is you can see the best lap time compared to you. You can see the three best lap times compared to you, and you can see the best five lap times. Let's say I click on B3. What's going to happen is we're going to see the three best lap times of this series and then we can also compare it to us as friends 
this is really just a cool stuff to, to do. You can also see how close people are in the top list and you can you know, also have a feeling how far away you are from them. We were only talking about the best race lap time, but we have a lot more. If you click on the arrow here, you can cycle through some metrics. We have best quality lap time, average quality lap time and so on. And these are the four metrics actually that you can see here. So now you know how to look at your lap times, how to compare it with your friends, how to add friends, how to remove friends, how to search friends, how to include the top one, three or five best lap times into this graph and how to cycle through in each of these metrics, best race, average race, best quality and average quality lap time. The next one is that we're going to cover is lap times. If I click on the lap times tab, we're going to see the top list of these best lap times. So talking about the iRacing Grand Prix series, the best race lap time top list is over here. We show the top 20 best race lap times and also whoever you added as friends, it's going to show up in this list and it's going to show you in which positions you and your friends are in this list. As we can see, Imran made it to the top 20. Yeah, we can just compare also each other, how far away we are from the top list from these guys who are ultimately the fastest guys of this series. We also see the best quality lap time here and we can also cycle through here with different metrics. On the left side, it's about race lap times. On the right side, it's about quality lap times. The next one is race stats. These are the stats that are fun to look at. That is just cool to see what the different metrics are here. For example, we have top five hype, meaning that the most amount of top five finishes. Looking at the list, Adam had five top five finishes and I had also five top five finishes and this other guy had also five. So we were the top three in this sort of top list. We have position gained, top list, how many positions you gained in a single race and someone did gain 18, which is incredible. And then most races, how many races you had in this week, which is someone did 15, which is also incredible. And we have overall incidents, how many incidents you have overall across all the races that you completed. These are the fun stats to look at. Obviously, you also included and your friends here, so you can also compare yourself and your friends and, uh, you know, make fun of them, <laughs> basically. And then for the last one, which is an uncompleted feature, but I'm going to cover it in the next video because it contains a lot of information. It's about participation and strength of field. What we're going to see here is an indication of how many drivers we had in uh, different days, the distribution of the drivers across the different races and so on. I'm not going to talk about it more. These are the basic things that you need to know. Use it for your advantage. Use it with your friends to compete with each other, to make fun of each other and just enjoy having a really easy way to have a look at these stats in your favorite series. So anyway, if you like the video, please hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't to see more of these contents coming up. And again, thank you very much for watching the video and see you later.